The story is told in Luke 15 of a man who had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. I grew up with a religious background, but I never really felt uh, any real connection. And um, I, just, I just didn't feel like I measured up. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. When I was 17, I was pregnant, I was independent, and I wanted to do things my own way. And I wanted to be on my own, so I moved out of my mom's house. It hurts me to see you this way, I can't sleep, I'm lying. In the distant land, the son wasted all his money on wild living. I was addicted to meth, alcohol, weed, cocaine, and uh, an 18 month period I spent over $4,000 on places to live and drugs and alcohol. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. Because of my addiction, I lost my family here, my husband, my daughter, my place to live, at one point in my life. I was found and revived from an overdose, and so it was just a little rough. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. I was dealing big time uh, drugs in Omaha and I got busted for uh, with 100 pounds of meth in my possession. That was the lowest point of the lowest. That was my rock bottom. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. I held the sign and we'll work for food. I'd be really embarrassed a lot of the time. So yeah, there's people that really look down on you bad. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here, I am dying of hunger. To tell you the truth, at that time, all I wanted to do was kill myself through my drug addiction. You know, life had no meaning. I didn't care about my life, my family, or nothing else. All I wanted to do was smoke myself to death on drugs. He said, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. I was dealing with many issues, and I didn't want to fall back into my addictions. So, um, and I found that I couldn't manage things on my own, so I decided to seek help out at the Open Door Mission. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. Well, I could tell you this, when I walked into Open Door Mission, I was nervous and didn't know what to expect. But now this is like family, and it's like a second home. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. I heard about a program. I figured it would probably be the best way for me to get my life back on track the way it needs to be. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe to the house and put it on you. Get a ring for his finger, sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we've been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. 
Since going through the mission, I have not only gained back my will to live, but I've gained back the relationship I have with my daughter. This son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And so the party began. Open Door Mission has changed my life drastically. It has introduced me to the Lord. You know, I love this place. This place is a blessing. Well, the Open Door Mission provides three meals a day and plus your clothing. That means the world. You know, it works. Since coming to the Open Door Mission, it's been like an extended family I never had. Uh, the people here are wonderful. It really does feel like home.